Alright guys and welcome back to the Saints VD channel for some content for another transfer video. Now, so far this summer we've talked a lot about potential arrivals as we have signed two new players. But today we're going to change that a little bit and talk about a possible departure. And of course, as you may have been reading from the papers this last probably 48 hours, that regards Mario Lamina. But before we get into the video guys, do make sure you are subscribed if you have not subscribed yet. Turn the notification bell on so you don't miss a thing throughout the rest of the summer as we build up to the new season. And make sure you're also following us on our socials. Right, let's get into the video. Now, it was pretty clear at the beginning of the window that Lamina might be sold by the club to sort of raise funds for purchasing more players, which was completely understandable as he isn't really starting player anymore but he's still worth a decent amount, if that makes sense. Or he was worth more than any other player that we'd be willing to sell. Now, the main club who seem to be interested in Lamina are Manchester United, who may be getting rid of Paul Pogba this summer and so will need a replacement. Arsenal are also interested, as are a couple of Serie A clubs, but it does seem like Manchester United are the front runners for Lamina. So in this video, we're just gonna have a little chat about how he's done at Southampton so far, hoping that if YouTube play their cards right, this will get into a couple of Man United fans' suggestion boxes. And so, just have a chat about him, what his pros are, what cons are, and so how that evaluates it, and whether he would succeed as a Manchester United player. Now to start off, he's definitely got the ego of a Manchester United player, but does he have the skill? Not too sure. It's divided the fan base massively over the last couple of days, the fact that we're willing to sell him. Some people think it's an absolute calamity that we are willing to get rid of him, which I don't really understand because we knew that it would be a good possibility that he'll be off. Um, and some fans think that if we get 20 million for him, we can wave goodbye. And that's not necessarily because he's a bad player. I think he's very good. If you're watching this and you're not a Salamden fan and you've watched the Premier League and you've watched Salamden play, you will know that he's got a lot of skill about him. Um, footwork is fantastic. Decent range of passing, but I think the problem for him over the last two seasons since he's signed is the fact that he's been played in quite a deep role where maybe his key traits are better for a more attacking midfielder role. He signed two years ago when we were under the management of Maurizio Pellegrino, that was 2017. God, that seems like a long time ago. He signed for 18 million pounds and at the time was our record transfer. He made his debut in the second game of the season and I think he did quite well on his debut. In front of the home fans, we did win that game for 3 2 against West Ham, I believe. And then, you know, we started the season okay under Pellegrino. He had a couple of good performances. Away at Crystal Palace, he was unplayable. And then after that, he had a few more good performances. And we thought, God, we've got a really good player on our hands. I mean, we always thought we would, given that he had come from a club like Juventus. But then you're always skeptical of the fact that he's never made it to that level um, of whilst being at such a huge club. And then those good performances started to become average and then those average performances started to get quite bad. And that's not necessarily because he was so poor. I think everyone in that team sort of felt it because we were just doing so poorly. The manager didn't help. The results just weren't going our way. We weren't scoring any goals and we were shipping goals here and there. Not necessarily a lot, but we weren't winning. We weren't scoring enough to get the margins that we needed to get points on the board and that's why we're in such deep trouble sort of around January, February time in 2018. Then after Pellegrino was sacked, we brought in Hughes. Lamina did okay, I think Lamina definitely liked him. Had a few decent performances, um, but it was more about getting points on the board. And then we sort of fast forward to the new season. We've got Mark Hughes as our manager and Pierre-Emil Hoiberg has had an okay season in and out. It looks like he's gonna be involved a bit more um, Oriol Romeu comes in and out inconsistent when he needs to be but he somehow always gets booked. James Will Prowse didn't look like he was anywhere near the first team anymore. He just wasn't putting in the performances. So it was very interesting what was going to happen with our midfield. And then if I remember correctly we did start with the first choice partnership of Lamina and Hoibo. It did okay but we just started the season so poorly under Hughes. I think we won once in our first, god was it about 12 games? Something like that. Um, really poor and uh, you know again I think the whole team suffered from that. Lamina had a couple of bad performances I think Manchester City away when we lost 6-1 that was a key one but then again loads of players did so I think it's a case of when we haven't yet seen what Mario Lamina can be and he's been here two years and it's a bit of a shame if he does go in my opinion because he hasn't really had a chance under Ralph Hazen until pretty much as soon as Hazen Little took over he had an abdominal problem that kept him out for four months. He came back at the end of April, scored uh, like five minutes <laughs> coming back uh, away at Newcastle and we still lost the game. And so that's when he was put in a more advanced role and he, he thrived. And so I think 
if he could be put in that sort of role in the Salamden team, we might have a decent player on our hands, and I'm sure we do, but you know, like I said, it's a very divided fan base at the moment as to whether we should cash in on him and potentially buy another midfielder or maybe use the money to buy a centre back, which we desperately need, or do we keep him, rotate him with him and Romeo, because it's very clear to me that Hoiberg is the first choice midfielder. Will Will Prowse's position get affected by that? It's a lot of ifs at the moment and we don't really have the answers. It also seems that he takes himself quite seriously, which obviously you should as a Premier League footballer, but with that compilation he put out today and all the videos he puts on his Instagram story, you know, I'm not being old fashioned, I'm trying not to be old fashioned about it, but you don't see any of the other players doing that. And I think in the dire situation that the club's been in the last two seasons, posting videos of yourself lip syncing to French rap, doesn't look that well good. So, you know, if we keep him, fantastic, but if we can get 20, 25 million pounds for him, I think we have to take it. You know, personally, I don't think he'll succeed at Manchester United. If he goes to a big club, I don't think he will do as well as probably he's expected to. Then again, it de completely depends on the role he's played in. If uh, if Solskjaer wants to keep him quite deep, I really don't think he's going to do that well. But then if he has more advanced role and there's a bit more freedom, maybe even a sort of just behind the striker kind of role. I do think they might have a decent player in their hands. But then again, he was always dubbed as Pogba 2.0, you know, having played at Juventus, and it seems the attitude is quite similar to Pogba. Not saying that he's had a bad attitude at Salamden, he's been a gentleman, really, about the whole situation. Obviously left out of this squad that's gone to Austria in pre-season, which has sparked the rumours about a possible transfer. He hasn't filed a transfer request or anything like that. I think he's made it quite clear that if an offer came in, he probably would like to leave, especially if it was a bigger club like Manchester United. But he isn't going to sort of whine and sort of moan his way for a move. So, to finish off, what do I think about all of this? Would I keep him or would I sell him? It completely depends on the price. Like, I'm not one of those fans on Twitter who's absolutely moaning about the fact that we're selling Lamina. There are some fans that are even saying that's going to completely ruin our transfer window. It's really not. Because if we've been able to do okay under Hazen, who's granted we didn't do amazing, but the fact that he's changed such a dire team into a quite a good mid-table side, and if Lamina's not part of the plans, when we're a team sort of battling against relegation, are we really going to need him for this role? I love Hoiberg. I always like Romeo as well when he comes in. I think he was quite consistent when Lamina was injured. So for me, I'm not that fussed about whether he goes or not. If we get the 20, 25 million that we will reinvest in a centre back or even a winger, Jared Bowen has been linked recently. I would take it. And Manchester United do need a midfielder. Obviously, they've got rid of Herrera. <laughs> But I don't think it's an upgrade on Herrera at all. If Herrera can get a move to PSG, I really don't think Lamine is the one for them. But having said that, I haven't seen him in an advanced role that maybe he might be playing a bit more of and that he will thrive in. As I've said, it's really a case of the unknown here. We just don't know whether he's going to do well if he stayed at Salamden or whether he'd step up if he went to a big club like Manchester United. But I'm going to stop waffling there guys and end the video here. Make sure you let us know in the comment section below what you think about the whole Lamina situation. Should we be looking to sell him? How much money do you think he's worth? And will he, will he succeed at a big club like Manchester United? Make sure you're subscribed. You've liked the video as well if you've enjoyed it. Follow us on our socials so you don't miss a thing and we'll see you in the next one.